And, but you just also mentioned there the really interesting case of uh, cancer, which is a different kind of problem for, I, yeah. But, but the point is here that you use, what we do is we design antibodies that will bind to say a specific protein in cancer, and then they become a therapeutic. So my design problem is to design the antibodies against a now a disease target. And the reason that we know they're so effective is that our own, you know, our own immune system shows us that antibodies work because <laughs> right. that's how they work. And so what we have to do is work out, one, how you replicate that first in a laboratory experiment, which is what most people have done up till now. And what I'm interested in doing, which is how do you replicate that on a computer such that I can design the antibody that will bind to the, the target that you want it to hit. Gotcha. So, um, so these biologics, it, it's very much state of the art. We're not, it's not something that is widely used in humans today. Oh yeah. No, they're in terms of biologics. I can't remember exactly. I think probably seven or eight of the top 20 drugs are biologics. So they're very widely used for lots of different diseases. So there were several antibodies that were um, anti-COVID antibodies that were that were used. Um, and many are used for things like cancer treatments and that kind of thing. I think one of the things to think about them in terms of treatments, though, it's, it's kind of the important distinction because people get very excited, is that unlike a small molecule, to deliver this, it's always going to be like an injection or an IV drip because it you can't take this as a pill because your stomach would destroy a large molecule of this type. So uh, you're only going to design them for quite serious conditions because, you know, right. I probably don't want to have to go and have an IV drip every time I have a headache. But yeah. I would be quite happy to do that if I was a little more seriously ill. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I'm beginning to get the impression that I personally have not been administered any biologics. <laughs> I'm going to go for a no. It's a, they're, they're mostly for quite serious conditions you know there's a lot of them targeted at um some various cancer types that's probably the the biggest space they've been used in there's a few now i mean there are covid antibodies that um were used for particularly for people who were unlikely to raise their own antibodies against covid so oh, people who had other conditions to, so to help them there. Um, and there are some for some other diseases as well can they be personalized to an individual's cancer I think the answer to that would be yes, because you're designing for a specific site. So, I um, mean, I think that would be, I have, to be honest, in terms of antibodies themselves, I don't think that's been done. Biologics more generally, which, you know, I, it's sort of opens a massive can of worms if I go too far, but <laughs> there are things particularly, so I mentioned TCRs earlier, certainly with those, there is work where people personalize those to be used as particular um, medicines for an individual um, so you take samples from an individual to make, create a medicine that might help them. Right. Um, that sounds, uh, like something that could be super promising in the future. I imagine it's the kind of thing that today is extremely expensive. I think it is both expensive, but also quite slow today. And I, I guess that's one of the reasons right. why I'm so interested in the computational methods. If you have to experimentally work out what you're going to do, that takes time. Right. And, and so, I mean, time costs money as well, but that is almost more serious. If somebody is seriously ill, right. taking six months, nine months, a year right. to get the right medicine is probably not the, right. I mean, not optimal. We've got help. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Just sit tight. <laughs> Best treatment ever is going to be here in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Just and, I mean, yeah. And, the, and I, to be honest, I don't know how far those kinds of treatments have got towards actually being, you know, a, a licensed treatment, but there's definitely work where people are doing that kind of specialized, um, trying to make them personalized in that way. It's very interesting. So, uh, so even though uh, these kinds of uh, biologic administrations via IV are relatively rare and only done in serious cases, they are nevertheless, you were mentioning a sat there of something like them being uh, you know, the half dozen of the 20 most, uh, yeah. most, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I can't remember the exact yeah, numbers, but, but they are a massive class of, um, they're not rare. And they're not rare at all. No. And some of it is because they can target some of these, like, you know, I, mean, I, I can't think of the polite words for it, but basically diseases that are very serious. Right. 
So, and another reason for this is also, I mean, and this is kind of another reason why I want to do this on a computer is that they're expensive to make currently. So, so it's a, once you know what small molecule you want to make, it might have been very expensive to do all the research to get to that small molecule, but actually small molecules are quite cheap to manufacture. Mm. Not, it's not like totally right. zero, right. but it's not that expensive. Whereas biologics, to actually make them at the end, you have to basically express them in cells. That's how you make them. Mm. So you're imagining a massive factory to do this. And so they're considerably more expensive to make. And as I said, you know, this is a biological molecule, so you've got to work out a way of keeping it safely as well. So they're a much more expensive type of medicine, and that means that that limits their use. But, of course, it can make them very profitable for very important diseases and things they want to do. So it's really important to work out ways of actually making them cheaper to discover in the first place and cheaper to make once you're doing that so that you can really use them in more places as well. Got it. So... If we don't use data and computing to try to find these molecules, how do you do it then? You're just kind of guessing, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you do it, it. Well, there are sort of two main ways to get these molecules. And um, the first one, um, the squeamish should not listen to the next bit, because the most obvious way to do this is to use another animal's immune system. So I've just described how good we are at it. So th what's the best way to raise an antibody? Well. One way to do it is, um, and actually what's done commonly here is there are mice now that exist, but mice would be a good example here, where we've, in inverted commas, humanized their immune system, because obviously I need it to be human, not mm -hmm. mouse. Mm -hmm. But you could just use normal mice, and then you have to work out how to humanize it. Mm -hmm. And then you inject the animal with very large quantities of whatever it is you want to raise the antibody against. Um, obviously, that's for step one. And then the, the way to describe this is then you have to harvest the animal's immune system to see what it's done. Or you have to take lots of extract samples from the animal to see what antibodies it's raised. So what you're doing is using the natural immune system of, say, a mouse to identify antibodies that bind right. to your target. Interest. So that's one way. Um, the other way is really the best way to imagine this, and it's kind of the way I want to think about doing it on a computer, but you do it as an experiment. What you have is a massive library of antibodies. Usually we'd say something like a phage display library. And what you've done is artificially made yeast cells, for example, doesn't have to be, that's the easiest way to describe this. And each one expresses loads of one type of antibodies. They've all got different sequences. Now, these libraries can get quite big. So this is a big experiment you're running. So imagine you've got this and then you flood it once again with your thing you want it to bind to. So I would say the antigen, the thing you're trying to get. And then effectively, you find all of the cells that bound to it. So now you have some binders. And then what you do is you sort of refish. So you take those cells, you make, you make them do mutations in a similar way to in the body. But obviously, this all ends up being a bit smaller scale mm -hmm. because the numbers to be able to do these experiments are smaller. And you repeat that experiment until you get binders to your target of interest. Right. So the phrase I use is before you do it on a computer, the way you do it is you go fishing. Because right. effectively what you do is you go, here's the antigen, fish in the pool. Oh, I've got something that sticks. Excellent. <laughs> right. And in order to do that, so you've got like, uh, you've got like a million different kinds of lure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that will get stuck to a very specific kind of fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, got it. Okay. So yeah, so that's the traditional way of identifying biologic drug candidates. Uh, but then as we kind of kick the show off, uh, we can use data, machine learning, AI, uh, to be able to predict uh, what the drug candidate would be so that you're, I guess, maybe fishing from a much smaller pool or do you, are, do you sometimes, you're just able to say, that's the fit, that's like, we've, we've got the, we know exactly what the right lure is for this particular kind of fish. I think the answer there is can't do the second one yet, want to get there in the end. <laughs> right, right, right. So at the moment, what you're trying to do is, what, what you want to do ideally is for somebody to say, this is the target, this is the thing that is disease causing, and I want you to produce an antibody that binds to that. And I'd love to just be able to effectively put the target into a computer program mm. and it would give me the sequence of the antibody that would bind. Right. Okay, that's the, that's the big you know, end goal. And there are lots of pieces you need along the way to be able to do that. 
you know, things like thinking about um, understanding the structure and shape of the antibody. So what shape will it make? As I change the sequence, it will change the shape and that changes whether it would bind or would not bind to my target. What we are really at the stages of doing now, and this is what everyone's doing, is working out how can I make those experiments much, much more efficient. So given I have a small amount of data about what might bind weekly, for example, could I work out things that would bind much more strongly? And the other thing about this and retain all those other properties I mentioned earlier about, you know, it's got to be human. I don't want to inject you with something that's not human. I've got to be able to keep it in a bottle in a fridge. So that there's a lot of physical properties it must have. Um, you know, I want it to express really well. So that's that question about manufacturing it. If it doesn't express well enough, there'll never be enough antibody. It won't make a good drug. So you kind of have this big multi-optimization problem that you're trying to do as you do this. And I hope it's fairly obvious to everybody, big multi-optimization problem. What I want is lots of data that describes these kinds of things are human. These kinds of things um, will be able to be kept in a bottle. These kinds of things mm -hmm. express well. Mm -hmm. Yep. How do I feed all that information into an algorithm such that it makes good decisions about you know, what you should do? And in one sense, at the moment, what you want to do is connect that to a lab so that you have algorithms that make good decisions about what you should test next in the lab to learn as much information as possible um, to design the antibody better and better to bind specifically to your target of interest and keep all those properties I've just talked about.